Hello students, welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart and today we're going to do an example for shear and bending moment diagrams using integrals. Uh, this example is coming from Hibbler's Statics book and uh, the notes, the, the uh, example notes for this video are available on my website. Check out the caption below this video, click on the website, and you'll have access to all of the lecture notes, all the example videos for an entire uh, statics course. All right, so let's get started with this example, example 7.8. We're asked to draw the shear and moment diagrams and solve for the equations of those diagrams. The beam that we're given is shown here, where we have a concentrated force of 2 kilonewtons applied at A, a uniform distributed load of 1.5 kilonewtons per meter applied over a, a range of 2 meters, and we have a rigid wall support at B. Let's start solving this problem by replacing this diagram with the free body diagram and identifying our knowns and unknowns. So what we'll do is simplify the body, just putting our two points of interest, A and B, putting our known loads of 2 kilonewtons and 1.5 kilonewtons per meter, and then we free the body by replacing the wall that that's the, the wall support with reactions. Now in this problem, we'll, we'll find reactions that develop are BY and MB, a moment uh, at point B. Now, typically there would be a BX for a wall support, but because none of our external loads are directed in the X direction, there is no X load on this problem. All right, so we've got our free body diagram. We can succinctly see, I mean, our knowns are the, of course, the, the external loading and the dimensions, and our unknowns, there's two of them, BY and MB. So let's start off with creating some equations of equilibrium to solve for BY and MB. We'll do the sum of the forces in the Y direction. That's a pretty straightforward one to get. And we'll do the sum of the moments about point B in order to solve for BY equaling 5 kilonewtons and MB equaling 11 kilonewtons times meters. Now that we've got these unknowns out of the way, we're ready to start crafting our shear and moment diagrams. Now, as we craft these diagrams, we are going to use integral equations to help us graphically build the diagram. This is really the preferred approach when we're dealing with really complicated problems that have a lot of different types of loading. Let's start with the shear diagram. And to craft this diagram, we do it graphically. The best thing to do is to identify which of the integral equations are going to be viable for this problem, which ones are actually we actually need to use. Well, in our body or in our problem, we have, just, we have concentrated forces, right? We have some applied concentrated forces. So we've got uh, this two kilonewton force and we've got BY, right? Well, we have an equation here that tells us that applied concentrated forces cause a step change in our shear diagram. So whenever we encounter those, we're going to need to graphically step change the diagram, right? And that's what we do in our first step. We apply negative 2 kilonewtons to the shear diagram, a step change, because that's what we encounter as soon as we hit point A. All right. We also, in this problem, have a distributed load. And we have an equation that tells us distributed loads cause a slope to appear in our shear force diagram. So the slope of the shear force diagram, this slope, is equal to the value of the distributed load. Well, 
In our problem, we have a distributed load here, and it has a value equal to 1.5 kilonewtons per meter. So, graphically, in our shear diagram, we are going to apply that slope of negative 1.5 kilonewtons per meter to the diagram, right? And then, in order to find the equation, because we want to find the equation in this problem, we're asked to find the equation, we'll need to do indefinite integration of the distributed load plus some C term and solve for that C term. If we want to actually describe this portion of a shear diagram as an equation. So that's what we do. We put the distributed load inside, which is negative 1.5. We integrate to get the function as negative 1.5 times x plus c. We test a known location at x equal to 2. The value of the shear force should be equal to negative 2. But it also should be equal to our equation. So we're going to go ahead and plug that 2 in the equation. And then we can solve for the unknown C. And we find that C is equal to 1 by solving that equation. Putting it all together, we find the equation for the shear force, this portion of the, of, of the shear force of, of uh, uh, diagram, is equal to negative 1.5 times x plus 1. Now this equation is going to be very useful to us because there also exists a relationship between the shear force diagram and, and the shear force equations with the moment diagram that we have to craft. So, um, so we've got this line here. Now we've got a return. We've got one last step to do, and that is re re result of this BY concentrated force. We're at the end of our line, we're at negative five, but we encounter a step change in our diagram that's going to return us to a value of zero. So in this shear force diagram, we start at zero and we end at zero. This is a good way for us to verify that we crafted our diagram correctly. We should start at zero and we should end at zero. All right, so we've got the shear force diagram crafted. Now, let's move on and craft our moment diagram. Oh, and there is uh, one more thing that we should do. We should really always try to do for these problems, and that is create a table that describes the position that we are on the beam, any step changes that we might encounter due to concentrated forces, and then the magnitude of where we, of the of the shear force at just to the right of our x position. This is a very important table because this is a table that is often filled in when you do an exam. Okay, and it's important that we note that these measurements are taken just to the right. So at position x equal to 0, we had a step change of negative 2 kilonewtons that was caused by that concentrated force. And then just to the right of, of 0, we're at negative 2. At 2 meters, we didn't have any concentrated forces. And just to the right of 2 meters, we were at negative 2. At the end of our beam, at 4 meters, we encountered a concentrated force of 5 kilonewtons, and at the end, just to the right of that point, we should be at zero. So let's keep this in mind. Uh, do get some practice filling in this type of table, but let's move on and get our moment diagram. For our moment diagram, before we start to craft it, we also want to go and collect what equations, what integral equations, are going to happen in our problem. 
right? One that we know off the bat is going to be the effect of a coupled moment. In our body, we have a coupled moment at the wall, MB. That coupled moment is going to cause a step change in our diagram. Another equation that we need to use is the equation that describes the relationship between shear force and the slope of the moment diagram. The shear force is, can be a function, can change with position, as we just found, as we found that equation, right? So the shear force that we know, our other diagram, we are going to directly use in order to find the slopes in our moment diagram and create all of our lines and curves, right? And then there's one more equation that we need to use, and that is the equation to find the equation for the, for the moment diagram, where the equation for the moment diagram is the indefinite integration of the shear force, and it can be the shear force function, it's this directly, integrating it over distance, plus some unknown C term. Once we find this, we're going to have to evaluate M at a certain position in order to solve for that C term, right? So now that we've reviewed the equations, let's go through building this problem, right? The first portion of our curve, if we think about it, we don't have any couple moments acting. So we want to go and look at our shear force diagram and see what slope we need to use. In our shear force diagram, from zero to two meters, the shear force is a constant value of negative two. The shear force is a constant value of negative two from, from zero to two meters, then the slope of our diagram here, or the, the line that describes uh, from zero to two should be the slope negative two times x. That's what it should be, right? And if we do that negative two times x, we'll find once we're at two meters that we're at a magnitude of negative four kilonewtons times meters for the moment, right? So we have a linear. This is a linear equation here from zero to two. It's great. Okay. Well, what about from two to four? What happens between two to four? Let's go back to our shear diagram. In our shear diagram, we see that shear force is now an equation. It's a changing equation, right? From zero to two. And we found that equation already. So what do we need to do to apply it in our moment diagram? Well, we need to take that equation and plug it in here into the moment equation. We, we then need to solve for C, and then we'll figure out what this MX portion between 2 meters and 4 meters is, what it actually is. And it's going to end up being nonlinear in this case. So let's start that process. Let's take our shear force equation and plug it in to the indefinite integral. We integrate it, finding negative 1.5 over 2 times x squared plus x plus c. So we find that form. Then what we'll do is we'll explore a known value of m. At 2, at two meters, m should be equal to 4 kilonewtons times meters, right? If we plug that two meters into the equation we found, we can then solve for the unknown C. So that's what we do. We plug it in and we find that C is equal to negative three. With that known, we now have the equation for the moment where the moment, moment between two and four uh, meters is equal to negative 1.5 divided by 2 times x squared plus x minus 3. So now we've got this portion 
of the curve that we can draw. We could use our calculators to help us to, to draw that nonlinear curve, right? But now we're we're at the we're at the end of the beam and we're down at negative eleven kilonewtons times meters, right? What do we have at the end of the beam? What do we encounter? Well, we're going to encounter our coupled moment, MB, the moment we found, that MB, the reaction, right? And that MB is equal to positive 11. So we're going to go from negative 11 back to zero. And if we look, we started at zero. So a way to verify that our problem, that we've, that we've drawn our diagram correctly, is we should start at zero and we should end at zero. Okay, so now one last thing we need to do, we need to create a table that describes this diagram. We'll take the x position, we'll take whatever what the slope is, so the dv over dx, I mean, the, yeah, the, um, the dm, over the dx, the slope, right? And then we'll also say, what is the value of the moment just to the right of the x position? So if we do that and examine it really quickly, uh, zooming out here, we have an x position of zero. The slope that we found comes from our shear force diagram of negative two kilonewtons. And our moment at zero, just to the right of zero, is, is zero. At two meters, our slope just to the right of two meters is going to be the VX equation. And the magnitude of M just to the right of two is still negative four. And then lastly, at four meters, our slope, we're just to the right of our beam is going to be nothing. There's no slope just to the right of the beam. And our moment just to the right of the beam is going to be zero. Make sure that you get some practice filling in this type of table. Because again, this type of table would be on your exams. All right. I think we've uh, had a good example. It, it's touched a, uh, a lot of the different equations that you would need to use, the integral equations for solving shear and moment diagram problems. Um, make sure to, if you have questions, put them in the comments. I read the comments, I, I, I reply to them. Uh, also, go to the course website. All of the lecture materials, the notes, uh, a library of the videos, all the good stuff is there. And I'll see everyone in the next example.